Hey everyone, it's Triple Mango Threat, and today we're talking about some unique commanders. Let's jump right into it. So first we're going to talk about eight and a half tails for two white. It's a two-two fox cleric. The first ability is we pay one and a white. Target permanent you control gains protection from white until end of turn. We can pay a colorless and then target spell or permanent becomes white until end of turn. What's really cool is that these feed into each other. So for example, if someone wants to terminate our commander, we can make that spell white with eight and a half tails second ability. Then we can give our commander protection from white with eight and a half tails first ability. This can get really annoying because it seems like our opponents can't do anything to mess with our board. When it comes to board wipes, that's going to get around protection. So that is where the deck fails, but let's talk about the cards you can expect in this type of deck. Circle of Protection White. We can pay one and the next time a white source of our choice would deal damage to us, we can prevent that damage. Well, with our commander, we can make a permanent white. So if they attack us with a huge Eldrazi or something that's going to kill us immediately, we can make that permanent white and then we can prevent the damage that white source would deal us. This can get really dumb because as long as we have the mana, we're going to stay alive. Again, the same thing with Rune of Protection White. We can pay a white and prevent all damage to us from a white source. We can cast things like Glare of Heresy. We can exile target white permanent. So for three mana total, we can exile permanents instead of just the normal seven. Now, I've seen this built a couple of ways, but the one I want to mention is Voltron. So pretty much you get all the swords or any auras, equip it to our commander, so it has protection from anything, and we deal commander damage and we win the game. But really, you can build this however you want. It's a mono white deck, so of course it's going to have its limits, but now that we can have protection from pretty much everything, this is a really cool commander. Next, let's talk about Kaiga the Tide Star. For five and a blue, it's a five-five dragon spirit with flying. When it dies, we can gain control of target creature. So how this would be built is that it's okay if our commander dies because we're gonna be making a bunch of copies. And now there is a legendary rule. There can't be two of the same legendary creature on just one battlefield. So one will have to die. So for example, when we cast things like Cackling Counterpart, just for three mana, we can create a token that's a copy of target creature we control. So for three mana, we make a copy of our commander. One has to die. So that means we get to gain control of target creature just for three mana. And the cool thing is we get to keep this creature. It's not just until end of turn. Another card is quasi duplicate. Again, for another three mana, we can create a token that's a copy of target creature. It also has jump start. So by discarding a card and paying another three mana, we can do this again, and then we'll have to exile it. There's creatures that come in as copies as well with mirror image, clone, cryptoplasm, and stunt double. So yes, this is going to rely on our opponent's decks really because we want to gain control of their creatures. Another silly card in this deck is Royal Elemental for three blue, blue, blue. It's a three, two elemental with flying. It also has landfall. So whenever a land enters our battlefield, we can gain control of target creature as long as we control Royal Elemental. So yes, this has that little exception there, but still when we play a land, we're gonna take one of our opponent's creatures. This gets really dumb. So if you don't care about your commander dying and you love to copy your opponent's creatures, I really recommend this one to you. Next, we're talking about Blim Comedic Genius for two black and red. It's a four, three imp with flying. When it deals combat damage to a player, that player gains control of target permanent you control. Then each player loses life and discards a card equal to the number of permanents they control but don't own. What's really nice is that we get to choose what permanent they gain control of and they can't refuse your generous gift. What's really cool is that the players will lose life and discard cards for all permanents they control but don't own, not just the ones they received from us. And this control change effect is indefinite. It doesn't wear off and it doesn't expire when Blim leaves the battlefield. But if we do leave the game, we get our permanents back and this will no longer happen. So some cards we can find in a deck like this is Demonic Lore for two and a black. It's an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, we get to draw three. But at the beginning of our end step, we have to lose two life for each card in our hand. So that doesn't seem really good, but it's really good when we give it to our opponent. And a classic is Harmless Offering for two and a red. It's a sorcery. Target opponent gains control of target permanent you control. You're going to find this in a lot of decks that want to give permanence to other players. And for three mana, this isn't too bad. Now, a pretty rough one is Demonic Pact for two black black. It's an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one that hasn't been chosen. It can deal four damage to target creature or player. We gain four life. Target opponent discards two cards. You draw two. And the last one is you lose the game. What's really rough is that we can choose the first three modes. So we can deal four damage to target creature or player, gain four life. We can have somebody discard two, we can draw two, and right before it gets to our fourth upkeep, we can give this to an opponent. This is so, so horrible, but 
really awesome because it's like just ticking down and our opponents should know what's going to happen. But yeah, this is a great card to have in the deck. Humble Defector is another great one. We can draw two and then we're going to give it to our opponent, which may not seem really good because they have the opportunity to draw two as well. But with our commander, they're going to be losing life and discarding cards. So it's actually really worth it. Bizarre Trader for one in a red. We can tap it and target player gains control of target artifact, creature, or land you control. So we don't just have to use our commander or all these other cards. We can actually just tap Bizarre Trader, give them a land or whatever we need to to make them start losing life and discarding cards. Some more mean things we can do is Steel Golem. You can't play creature spells. Of course, if they have a sack outlet, that won't be really worth it, but if they're not able to interact with this card, we can pretty much shut them off. Same with Grid Monitor. It's the same card, just one more mana. So if you love to give your opponents your cards, make them lose life and discard cards just for owning those permanents, this is a great commander for you. Throwmock the Insatiable. For 3 red and green, it's a 0-0 zero, zero Hellion, but it has Devour X, where X is the number of creatures devoured this way. So when it enters the battlefield, we can sacrifice any number of creatures. This creature enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it for each one of those creatures. But what's really cool about Gromach is that it has Devour X. So whatever number of creatures we sacrifice, we're actually going to square that. So if we devour one creature, Thromach is going to enter with a 1-1 one, one counter. If we devour two creatures, 4, devour 3, we get 9. So this can get really crazy if we have a bunch of tokens, and that's exactly what this deck wants to do. So for example, we have cards like Dragon Lair Spider. It is 6 mana, but hear me out. When an opponent casts a spell, we make a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token onto the battlefield. And our opponents are going to cast a lot of spells, so we're going to have a lot of tokens, especially with Scoot Swarm. When a land enters the battlefield under our control, we're going to make a 1-1 one, one green insect, and if we control more than 6 lands, we make a copy of Scoot Swarm. Yeah, we're going to be making a bunch of tokens, especially with Awakening Zone. This is one of my favorites. At our upkeep, we get to make an Eldrazi spawn, and we can also sacrifice it to make 1 mana. So after we have a bunch of tokens made, we actually win the game with cards like Chandra's Ignition. So for 5 mana, we can have target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each other creature and each opponent. So if we have devoured seven creatures, our commanders of 49-49, we can cast Chandra's Ignition, deal each opponent and each other creature 49 damage, and we'll pretty much win the game. Or if we just want to hit one opponent, we can use cards like Thud and Soul's Fire. So if you want to make a bunch of tokens and eventually sacrifice them to your commander and then kill everybody with your commander, this is a great deck for you. Yannette Cryptic Sovereign. For two white, blue, black, it's a 3-5 Sphinx with Flying, Vigilance, and Menace. Whenever it attacks, we're going to reveal the top card of our library and if that card's converted mana cost is odd, we can cast it without paying its mana cost, otherwise draw a card. So our commander's going to love to attack, and that's very important to us. And we also care about odd CMC. So we can draw a lot of cards with Vega the Watcher. This is a three mana card, so if we reveal it from the top of our library when our commander attacks, we can cast this for free. But it says, when you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, draw a card. And we're going to be doing that a lot with this deck. We can cast things like Engaric's Wake, which is a board wipe that doesn't affect us at all in just our opponent. We can manipulate the top card of our library with Crystal Ball. It is an odd CMC spell, but we can pay one and tap it to scry two so we can manipulate the top card of our library. So maybe we don't want the top card and we'd rather have the second one. We can just do a little bit of a switcheroo and then we're all set for when our commander attacks. Being unblockable is going to be important, so we can use cards like Whisper Silk Cloak. It is an odd CMC, but it's going to make our commander unblockable and our commander will have Shroud, so that means we can't target it, but more importantly, our opponents can't target our commander as well. We can cast dumb things like Blazing Archon. Creatures can't attack us. We can cast Sepulchral Primordial. When it enters the battlefield, we can grab a creature from each opponent's graveyard and put it under our control. There's Doom Whisperer. We can pay two life to Surveil two, which means we can look at the top two and we can put any number of them into our graveyard. So it's like Scrying, except we can only work with the top cards of our library, and if we don't want them there, we have to put them in our grave. There's a lot of cards with odd CMC, so if you want a really unique commander that loves our commander attacking and focuses on only odd CMC, I really recommend this one. Kiji Honored One for two red, green, white. It's a 4-4 four, four beast, and it says whenever a creature attacks one of your opponents or a planeswalker an opponent controls, that creature gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. So usually you're going to find Naya or red, green, white to be the colors where we are attacking, but now this is promoting our opponents to hit each other, and they're going to get extra damage when they do. So what's really crazy is we can cast cards like Sylvan Offering, where we're going to make a bunch of tokens, not only for us, but an opponent as well. So already we're promoting 
hey, please hit your opponents. Here's a huge creature to do that. Shiny Impetus, this is going to make it where when the enchanted creature attacks, we get a treasure token and that creature gets plus two, plus two, and it's goaded. So it has to attack another player other than us if able. Right of the Raging Storm. So this is an enchantment where we're going to make Lightning Ragers and they can attack us or Planeswalkers we control. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, they make a 5-1 red elemental named Lightning Rager. They're going to put it onto the battlefield. It has Trample, Haste, and at their end step, they have to sacrifice it. So if we have our commander out, that's a 7-1. It can't attack us or a Planeswalker we control. Trample and Haste, yeah, this is a nasty card. We can also have cards like Gisela Blade of Gold Knight. When our opponents hit each other, it's now going to be double that damage, and when they hit us, it's going to be half that. We can make it to where our opponents have to attack with cards like Goblin Spymaster. So at the beginning of each opponent's end step, they're going to create a 1-1 red goblin creature token with creatures you control attack each combat if able. So a lot of creatures are going to be dying and hopefully they're not going to be coming at us and we're not going to be taking a lot of damage. So hopefully we're going to win the game by making a bunch of tokens, buffing up our opponent's creatures, and hopefully they're not going to be attacking us. Next we're going to be talking about Amareth the Lustrous for three green, white, blue. It's a 6-6 six, six dragon with flying. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top card of your library. If it shares a card type with that permanent, you may reveal that card and put it into your hand. So you actually don't have to play some kind of enchantment, artifact theme deck. You can really build this however you want, and if you happen to share the same type of permanent, this is a really great commander. So this could be creature, enchantment, artifact, land focus, and we really benefit from just getting cards to our hand. So for example, you can see cards like Smothering Tithe. It is an enchantment, but we make a lot of treasure tokens, and they happen to be artifacts. So when an opponent draws, and they don't pay the two mana, we can make a treasure token. It's going to enter our battlefield. We can look at the top card of our library, and if it's an artifact, we can put that into our hand, and that's really powerful. You can find cards like Brago King Eternal and Yorian Sky Nomad. This makes it where a lot of our permanents now are going to ETB a lot. So that means we're going to be looking at the top card of our library a lot, because Brago says, when Brago deals combat damage to a player, exile any number of target non-land permanents you control. Then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. So if we have Commander Sphere enter the battlefield, that means we get to look at the top card of our library, and it's an artifact. Again, we can get that to our hand. So if you're playing an enchantment deck, we have cards like Seder Enchanter and Mesa Enchantress. Whenever we cast an enchantment, we get to draw a card. Well, casting comes before the permanent entering the battlefield. So we can cast an enchantment, we'll draw a card, and when it enters the battlefield, we can see if the top card of our library is an enchantment. And if it is, we get to put it into our hand. This is just a great commander, and it's a lot of fun to play. Volrath the Shape Stealer for two black, green, blue. It's a 7-5 shape. Shifter. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a minus one minus one counter on up to one target creature. We can pay one and until our next turn, Volrath the Shape Stealer becomes a copy of target creature with a counter on it, except it's a 7-5 and has this ability. What's important is that it says target creature with a counter on it. It doesn't have to be that negative one negative one that we get to put on a creature at the beginning of our combat. So we can actually cast cards like Generous Patron. When it enters the battlefield, we can support two, which means we can put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. So we could be putting these counters on our opponent's creatures and then eventually copying them with our commander. We also have Forgotten Ancient. When a player casts a spell, we can put a plus one plus one counter on Forgotten Ancient. At the beginning of our upkeep, we can move those counters to any creatures. So that means if they have a really great creature, we can move a plus one plus one counter on it. Yes, it's going to get bigger, but now our commander can become a copy of it. Evolutionary Escalation. It's two mana, it's an enchantment, and at the beginning of your upkeep, we can put three plus one plus one counters on target creature you control and three plus one plus one counters our target creature and opponent controls. So both of these creatures are going to get bigger, but then we can target it with our commander and Volrath can become a copy of it later. So if you love plus one plus one counters and being able to copy creatures, whether it's ours or opponents, this is a great one for you. The last commander we're going to be talking about is Ramos Dragon Engine for six mana. It's a four four dragon with flying. Whenever you cast a spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Ramos Dragon Engine for each of that spell's colors. Remove five plus one plus one counters from Ramos. Add white, white, blue, blue, black, black, red, red, green, green. Activate this only once each turn. So it's very important that we cast spells with a lot of colors in it. So for example, all of the charms, such as Abzan, Jund, Sultai, that whole cycle, doesn't really matter what they do because we're going to be making a lot of counters on our commander, and that means a lot more free mana we could be using. We can also have cards like Corpse Jack, menace. If a plus one plus one counter would be put on a creature we control, we actually do twice that many. So when we cast charms, instead of just putting three counters on our commander, we can end up putting six counters, and that means ten free mana, just like that. 
I really like cards like Villainous Wealth already by itself, but when it's in this deck, we get three counters on our commander. But what the card does is that we can exile the top X cards of an opponent's library, and we can actually cast those for free as long as it's X or less, or whatever we put into it. We can cast cards like Atraxa, which already she's going to help us proliferate, but she is four colors, so that means we're going to have four counters on our commander. We have cards like Evolution Sage. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we get to proliferate, and this is great for getting more counters on our commander. We have Maelstrom Archangel. For white, blue, black, red, green, it's a 5-5 angel with flying. When it deals combat damage to a player, we can actually cast a spell from our hand without paying its mana cost. So again, we put 5 counters on Ramos. We deal combat damage to a player, we get to cast spells for free, we get that 10 mana for free, this is just a great one to have in it. Deep Glow Skate's gonna double our counters on any number of permanents, and again, Forgotten Ancient can move counters to our commander just by players casting their spells. Thank you all so much for watching, if you'd like any of these cards I mentioned, you can use the link down below and you'll help out the channel at no additional cost to you. Comment below and let me know if you'll be building any of these unique commanders. And subscribe for more Mango content. I'll see you all in the next one. Up.